This presentation focuses on a small but critical piece of historic archaeology in the Bluff Cobridge region, specifically physical evidence for TBs in the form of TB rings. This is a collaborative effort with Winston Hearst, and it has its origin in a Bureau of Land Management project known formally as the Cone Ridge Heritage Initiative. Informally, it is known as the Cone Project. The Cone Project is a multi-year baseline documentation effort centered on Cone Ridge. Many here are familiar with it, and a handful had the good fortune to have worked on it. It was contracted through the University of Colorado. Kathy Cameron is the principal investigator, and Winston was a field director and is overseeing the write-up. In our experience in the region, identification of an historic youth camp can be difficult, and consequently, they oftentimes go unrecognized as such. Typically, a definitive youth site assignation has been based on two feature types, youth-style rock art and wiki ups. Noticeably lacking is recognition of physical evidence for teepees, a key element of youth culture, with the one exception being a handful of teepee depictions noted in the rock art. This is despite the fact that there is abundant anecdotal evidence of youth camps throughout the area. For example, in Robert McPherson's ethno-history of the White Mesa Utes, entitled As If the Lamb Owned Us, Comb Ridge itself is stated to have been, quote, a favorite place to camp in the winter, close quote. We are confident that we identified TP rings in and around Comb Ridge during the course of the Comb Project. To our knowledge, this marks the first instance that TP rings have been recognized and recorded as such in the area and possibly greater southeast Utah. The Cone Project recorded at least six sites that contained TP rings and others that appear to have partial TP rings. In the past three years, while out walking my dog, I have personally identified about ten additional sites with TP rings that are within Cone Ridge. These are currently unrecorded. This past winter, I've located several other examples of TP rings outside the project area, ten miles northeast of Bluff. These two are unrecorded. In the following overview, I draw upon this larger potential data set of both recorded and unrecorded sites. The TP rings range in diameter from a little more than 4 meters to about 6 meters. They are constructed of expediently gathered flat line rock, typically 20 to 60 centimeters maximum dimension. The number of rocks can range from about 10 to 20 or even more. The patterning is somewhat variable, with rocks typically being somewhat widely spaced, between 40 and 80 centimeters, but in places two or three can be end-to-end -end or clustered. There is typically a noticeable gap in the ring in the east to southeast that presumably corresponds to the entrance. Most of the TP rings are in an open setting. However, in several instances, they are constructed directly against a juniper tree. Presumably, the tree served as a partial windbreak. In at least two instances, there is a scattering of cut juniper limbs in association with the ring. These may have served as supplemental closure along the base of the teepee. However, there is an historic photo published by McPherson which shows a teepee with the canvas or hide pulled back in part and cut branches laid down over the poles that were exposed. So that suggests another possible interpretation. <coughs> there are discarded teepee poles in three of the sites. All are steel axe cut and roughly five to six meters in length. A site at the north end of Comb Wash had a single teepee pole that was a, a classic straight slender conifer trunk, probably a young ponderosa pine, and it almost certainly was cut outside of the project area. A second site with a partial teepee ring had five teepee poles of cottonwood. A, sing a single teepee pole of cottonwood was present in the third site. The use of cottonwood on some level is unexpected. It would seemingly reflect available resource, and that potential for variability should be kept in mind when recognizing possible TP poles in this region. Also, in at least two instances, neither formally documented, we have come across a possible TP pole without an obvious TP ring. The camps all appear to be small, as none has more than two clear TP rings. Most of the sites appear to be single component view camps in terms of possible proto-historic or historic cultural affiliation. However, in at least four instances, there also appears to be a Navajo component with evidence of a Hogan having been present. It is unclear if the use in these four sites was overlapping, but we find this an intriguing possibility. And as an added wrinkle, it is also known that Utes and Paiutes in this area occasionally built Hogan or Hogan-like structures. As it is, one of the un 
recorded sites in Cove Ridge does contain a collapsed hogan like structure uh, that Winston and I both agree is definitely, it's not a hogan, but it's close. <laughs> it is unclear what overall time frame these sites represent. Potentially, one or more of these sites could be proto-historic, but we have no evidence for that at this time. Many have a sparse historic artifact assemblage dating to the late 19th, early 20th century. Observed artifacts include whole and cap food cans, sanitary food cans, including some embossed with sanitary on the end, evaporated milk cans of various types, baking powder tins, and shards of aqua glass and glazed earthenware. Dovetailing nicely with this historic time frame are photos that show the camp of Polk, a Ute headman, in February 1915. The camp was located 100 meters north of my house in Bluff on what is now Sitla land, and it is currently unrecorded. The photos show the camp in the days before and after a skirmish between Polk's Band and the citizenry of Bluff. The camp contains a single teepee along with a rectangular canvas tent outfitted with a wood stove. The teepee appears a bit smaller in diameter or more squat than one might expect. It's not clear from the photos if there are rocks present along the base of the teepee, if there was a TB ring, it did not survive. But importantly, these photos definitively document TB use in the Combe region mid-second decade of the 20th century. TB rings do not appear to have been common. To our mind, there have to be historic U camps where TB rings were absent. Also, we suspect TB rings may represent one end of a continuum of rock use associated with TBs in the Combe region, with some TBs having had only a partial rock ring as seen at the site with the five teepee poles, and others where maybe only one or two rocks were used. We do not know what the variables might be as the presence or absence of a teepee ring. They may be associated with a particular deep band, a particular period in history, the time of year, or some other factor. In closing, I hope this presentation is of use to those of you who have your boots on the ground in Southeast Utah. You teepee rings are indeed present in our little corner of the West, Folks need to be alert to that, as well as other potential evidence for TPs in the cultural landscape.